to um, read a, a brief extract from um, partway through chapter one of The Grunts in Trouble. I've got a cat to collect, said Mrs Grunt. She stepped out of the bedroom, tripped over something on the landing, and promptly fell down the stairs. Ag bounce, boing, thud, another ag roll, an even bigger ag! The something she tripped over was Sonny. Sonny wasn't the Grunt's flesh and blood child. They didn't have one of their own, but Mrs Grunt had always wanted one, and on one of those rare occasions when Mr Grunt was in a good mood and feeling all lovey-dovey towards his wife, he got a one. Well, Stedden one. Not that he planned it, you understand. Oh no, it wasn't planned, it just kind of happened. Mr Grunt had been out pounding the pavement in search of something else, I've no idea what, when he glanced over a garden wall, or maybe a fence, he could never remember which, and caught sight of a washing line. On that washing line had been an assortment of things hanging up to dry, one of which he was pretty sure was a spotted sock, and another of which had been a child. The child was held in position by a large, old-fashioned clothes peg clipped to each ear. And before you could say, put that child back, it's not yours, and anyway, it's not dry yet, Mr Grunt had leaned over the wall, or fence, and whipped that child off the line. Mrs Grunt had been very pleased. Sonny was the best present Mr Grunt had ever given her, with the possible exception of a pair of very expensive gold-coloured sandals and some old taped-together barbecue tongs which she used to pull out her nose hairs. Mrs Grunt didn't know much about children, but she could tell this one was a boy. Mrs Grunt knew that boys should always be dressed in blue, so she took a bottle of blue ink out of Mr Grunt's desk and tipped the contents into a great big saucepan full of boiling water. Next, she found some of her old dresses back from when she was a little girl and added them to the mix. She kept the dresses to use as cleaning rags, but now they were dyed, they didn't look bad. Then, because she didn't like to waste things, she went on to serve up the boiling blue water to Mr Grunt, who liked it so much he had seconds, but wasn't so happy when he had a blue tongue and blue lips for eight weeks. Sonny was already an odd-looking boy, what with his left ear being higher than his right ear, and that kind of sticky-up hair which never goes flat, even if you pour glue into it and then try taping into position with rolls of sticky tape. But in a badly made, badly dyed blue dress, though, he looked really, really odd. Here, let me spell that for you. O-D-D. Perhaps you could jot it down on a piece of paper and keep it under your beard until I ask you for it later. If you don't have a beard, then perhaps you could ask for one for your birthday. Sonny had been very young when Mr Grunt had snatched him from the washing line, so he didn't remember much about his real parents. He couldn't remember his father at all, though he did have a memory of a pair of amazingly shiny, polished black shoes. As for his mother, what he seemed to remember most about her was a nice, warm, snuggly feeling in the smell of talcum powder. Once in a while, snatches of a song would drift into his mind on little wisps of memory. The song was something to do with fluffy little lambs shaking their lovely little lambs' tails, and in his mind, it was his mother singing it. She had the voice of an angel who had singing lessons from a really good teacher. The Grunts were very fond of Sonny in their own way, but their own way was a strange way. But let me give you some examples, and if you don't like my examples, you can always give them back. For example, Mr and Mrs Grunt knew that boys don't like washing, so they never made Sonny wash. They knew that boys don't like tidying their bedrooms, so they didn't give him a bedroom. They made him sleep on the landing outside their room. The truth be told, there wasn't room for a second bedroom in the Grunt's house because they didn't live in an ordinary house. They lived in a caravan. Not a lovely, pretty, brightly painted wooden caravan. No, not one of those. Put such thoughts out of your mind. Nor a sleek, modern, metal caravan. No, not one of those either. They lived in a caravan Mr Grunt and his dad, old Mr Grunt, had built together out of stuff. Stuff that included an old garden shed, the sidecar of a motorbike and sidecar, the less interesting half of an ice cream van, and some bobs from a collection of bits and bobs, including an old dog kennel, some wooden planks, and a frothy coffee making machine. The end result usually made most sensible people run away if they saw it being towed round the corner by the Grunt's two donkeys, Clip and Clop. Ah, Clip and Clop. I was wondering when I get a chance to tell you about them, and now here we are.